Our first speaker this evening is Lane Jossenbeck. He's been a part of Pathways for three years now, and he's enrolled in five separate paths. Because of his confusion with Pathways, he's not started any of them until last month. Being a new Carol Woodian, he will be giving his icebreaker for his presentation, Mastery Pathway, and the hope of connecting with his audience. With that, I give you, as an accomplished speaker, as he is a procrastinator, Lane Johnson, that toxic relationship from within. Just take your time, I'm gonna read this, okay. Thank you, Table. Uh, thank you, Mr. To Mr. Toastmaster. Toxic relationships come in many forms, familial, romantic, even business related. One of the best known versions of a toxic relationship is that from the 1920s, two gentlemen, very intelligent, both from well, well, to do families and both college uh, bound and they were known as Leopold and Loeb. Had they not met, they probably would have lived very ordinary but very accomplished lives. Unfortunately, they did meet. <clears throat> they found within each other a way to feed each other's egos, both of them thinking they were the smartest person in the room. And eventually they thought, hey, you know, I'll bet you we could commit a murder and get away with it. And they found a 14 year old boy and were promptly caught after killing him. This, is sort of where I'm at with the toxic relationship I have within me. I am not Leopold and Noah, but I refer to them as my mouth and my brain. To best describe what I mean, there are multi-level reasons, segues, and juxtapositions as to why I am this way. I will, in no particular order, dispense a few of these segues and reasons now. When I was growing up, I used to hear to that one, people would want to go to the mountaintop and speak to the gurus and the sh uh, Sherpas up there because they, he or she, had all the answers. And growing up, I thought I should take up meditation and I should become enlightened like a Tibetan monk and I will have all the answers. And then I realized what it is that makes America. And so today I'm like, <laughs> Tibetan monk, <laughs> How hard is it to understand the universe when you live in the Himalayas? There are mountains, yaks, and three paths that lead back to your village. There is nothing more else to consider. The benefit of staying peaceful is strictly for survival so that you don't have an avalanche. That's it. You want to be enlightened? Try coming to America and understanding and making sense of here, the most complex civilization that's ever created. There was also a band called 10 Years After, and they had a song entitled, I'd Love to Change the World. And in that were the lyrics, tax the rich, feed the poor, till there are no rich no more. And while the Crayola haired colored barnyard animal nose wearing rings, nose ring wearing youth of today may think that this is just the end all to the philosophy of how to get out of debt. That's not what the lyrics are about. The lyrics are about, if that is your answer, what happens when you run out of rich people? And these are, this is when I'm a kid, I'm really realizing I want to be this smart. I want to have these answers. I want to know these things. And I also wanted to figure out some of the hypocrisies, especially these days. I really want to get into that. But before all that, back when I was in junior high school, pardon me, back when I was in junior high school, I had a knack for signing my name to anything that was supposed to be done anonymously. It was a teacher's paper, uh, a, a, a credential, anything that, that, that they said, well, you, you don't have to sign your name. I always sign my name because if I don't really want to put my name to it, like John Hancock did in great big bold so that the king didn't have to look, then I didn't, obviously I didn't believe in it. And that is exactly what I did. And at that same time, I also started saying what was exactly on my mind. Teachers would ask me a question. If you don't want to know the answer, please do not ask me the question. But or I forced, Frank, fortunately, my teachers were quite cool and they let me tell and say what was on my mind most of the time without getting into trouble. Now, another reason that I want to, or that, I, that I had problems with my brain and my mouth these days is because for a long time, I stopped using my brain. I stopped reading books and I just became complacent pretty much became a drunk for about 18 months. And <laughs> I was very stupid. For example, in 1994, I was blaming the Branch Davidians for the problems in Waco. I also uh, backed our government when they decided, decided to go uh, enter Afghanistan, even though there were no Afghanis in the terrorist plot in 9-11. But I believe that. It's like, why would my government lie to me? Why would the media lie to me? That was my thinking at the time. I've changed a little bit since then. And the problem with that is that my brain and my mind 
and, and my mouth, they just, they create this big bang of ideology in the synapse of my brain. And because it's physics based, it's got to come out somehow. And this, of course, leads me to a motion picture called The Four Seasons. If you've ever seen it, it's Alan Alda wrote it. And it's in one scene, Jack Weston is yelling at his wife, who also feels the need to say everything on her mind. And I tell this to myself every time my mouth gets me in trouble. Well, maybe that's the problem. Why do you always have to say what you think? I mean, you think that your thoughts should drop straight down from your brain onto your tongue like a gumball machine. And this is where I pretend to not take full responsibility of my abilities to offend because I blame biology. The human body possesses a good many sphincters. I just happen to need one between my brain and my mouth. And it does not happen. So there is, I suppose, technically, there's the brain blood barrier that's sort of a sphincter like, but it does not help me with getting into trouble in a lot of ways. I, and I also fancy myself as the Socrates of the modern era. And I feel, hey, people are so confused these days because they haven't heard my opinion. Now, I know that this isn't, uh, it's not biologically created. It's just the way I am. The one thing I can say is that despite my extremely opinionated personality is I have no problem listening to other opinions. And I have changed my mind in the past. Unlike the memes on Facebook, I have seen memes. I have seen documentaries that have completely changed the way I think. One example is Michael Jackson. Positive he was a pedophile. Saw a documentary, very well done, called Square One. Changed my mind completely. Uh, again, I go back to a, a handful of, of um, things. Oh, Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb is a racist and a psychopath. No, no. I, I caught a few things on YouTube and it's like, there's no way. It's live TV and he hasn't acted up a single time. I've gone back to research, totally changed my mind. Uh, oh, but there is another thing because I am very open-minded despite my opinionated personality. There was a, a video years back called Executions and I have been in, in favor of capital punishment since I was 10, 11 years old, so about a half century. And this was completely anti-capital punishment, but I own this video because the argument that they presented was so well done, I had to have it. And they did make the solid point for the people that are executioners that may not believe in death. So what does this say, or what does this have to do about me? It's just to let you know that if you two are opinionated, and you're maybe you're a little more timid to give your opinion, tell me, I'll listen. If you wanna give a speech about it, I'll evaluate it, and I will do it solely on the way you presented it, not the ideology. I love, not really an argument, but I like well-presented facts. I like well-presented debate. And I just want you to know that um, I have no problem with, with a little ruffling of feathers. I'm really good at it, too. Oh, now I'll do it later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Um, Thank you. So, Lane, I cannot stress enough as to how entertaining you are. Every meeting, you make everyone smile. And I have to say, your title, Toxic Relationships from Within, was truly very creative because you galvanized the audience to sort of draw a connection as to how this title could fit into an icebreaker and how it could encapture the essence of you as an individual. And for this being an icebreaker, I think it was quite a refreshing take because you expand the center of your universe and you include so many different aspects that not only expand into who you are as an individual at this very moment, but you involve a multitude of different aspects that you've encountered as you've progressed through life. Also, it was quite interesting of you to draw as to how in order to be enlightened, you should sort of jump from the um you know just the the serene and quiet places in the himalayas to the modern american civilization which i think i have to agree to a certain extent there is a lot to learn from people around us um you also you know really emphasize on this rather misalignment between your mouth and your uh, thoughts and your brain um through symbolizing how your brain is like a gumball machine, constantly dropping thoughts, and your mouth is letting it all flow out ceaselessly. Again, I found it quite interesting of you to draw back to your childhood. 
to show how since the age of 10 to 11, you were adamant and you had this streamlined vision when it came an outlook when it came to capital punishment. But then you also shed light on how you know, this one video or documentary with well-represented facts that were countering to your opinions, you appreciated them and you acknowledged them. So that, that embodies your ability to have this duality where despite of having closed opinions and strong opinions about certain things, you still open to what's countering. I believe you also had a prop that you brought up, but didn't have the time to show. Um, but I mean, I also liked how you drew that you, when you were young, you had this desire, innate desire to sign your name on everything that you came across, despite of being told not to, which shows how strong headed and level headed you are about your thoughts and opinions and how, how you love to speak your mind. I think a lot of us should learn to do that. Uh, you also draw upon your limitations in a very well manner, uh, very well fashion. And I love how you ended your speech by showing that you're you're open to anyone. I think one thing that you might want to change is talk a little slower. And again, um, probably work on looking less at what you've written and sort of interacting more with the audience, which you did. Um, but I, I, at times I found you invested into what you had in front of you, just reading verbatim. So overall, excellent speech. I look forward to hearing more from you.